Hello folks, and welcome back to twitch.tv slash gameswithnick. And I would like to start by personally apologizing to any Paper Mario fans. Um, I swear I, I don't have anything against that game, in fact I really like it. But I can help but giving it a bit of the short shrift for some reason. Um, today, once again, we will not be playing Paper Mario as scheduled. Um, I had to chat with some friends around a little long, and... I don't know, maybe it's something about the fact that I do voices in that game. It feels a little bit more like performing, and it was like, ah, I just want to chill a little bit. So instead, we're gonna start Detective Crime Thriller, Sherlock Holmes, The Devil's Daughter. Um, which, like the previous Sherlock Holmes games, is made out of a bunch of... I don't know, we'll go King Detective, I guess. Bit of a bunch of separate small cases, starting with Pray Tell. And I think it's, you know, the bite-sized approach means we can probably finish this one in about an hour and a half. And I expect this game, from what I remember, I haven't played, replayed it in a while, but from what I remember, it's pretty similar to the previous one. Five separate cases, you do your own deductions, kind of business. Um, unlike the next one, uh, Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1, which takes place in more of an open world. Also, hey, we're almost done with the Sherlock Holmes by Frogwares series. And oh boy, this looks bad. Why does this look this bad? I gotta say, this was a very unnerving intro. 48 hours earlier. Flashback. This is Baker Street. Watson looks even more a hipster than we've ever seen. Oh, I do apologize. Am I disturbing you? No, please. Come in. What is this hipster bullshit, Watson? Rubio. I'm Mr. Holmes' new neighbor. Oh, I didn't have the pleasure to... Uh, I am Dr. John Watson. Could we provide you with any assistance? Uh, she is not the concern, Watson. I'm... <laughs> then, what is this about? Uh, that child standing sniffing behind her. Get rid of... And I think we also have a new... And he is upset. What happened to the new Sherlock actor too, which he at the wrong door. Oh, for crying out loud. Oh boy, come warm yourself by the fire. Can I offer you a cup of tea, Mr. Rubio? Well, I um It is not as though we are disturbing you know who. Are we? I suppose not. Since you are our new neighbor, it is perhaps better that you know what he's like. You're starting to worry me. Well, Mr. Holmes is relaxing. His illness that he has seizes him when he finds himself with nothing to do. He becomes completely asocial. And alas, this is a very difficult, medically incurable case. Now it just might stay between us. Of course. I'm realizing that the levels are maybe a bit low, so I'm gonna raise them up a little bit. Of course, I understand. How very sad. But there is a cure, if only a temporary one. A thrilling inquiry. Most certainly. If he refuses this one, then his condition will worsen. Oh, uh, I am still here, you know. I didn't fall out of the window. Very well, then. Thank you. Oh, 
Tom is eight years old. He commended care and parents. Half of London can read and use a map. Name arm. Malformation, probably. Yeah, malformation and malnutrition. I think I think this probably completes the character portrait. Tom is eight years old. His clothes are well worn and have multiple patches neatly applied. Tom's parents are concerned for his well being. His spell skin indicates he's suffering from malnutrition. He looks sad in his red eyes. He has been weeping very recently. Tom's malformation could have been caused by his mother's poor nutrition during pregnancy. Now tell me, boy, what brings you here? It's it's my father, sir. He's missing. I I don't know what to do. What's his name? George Hurst, sir. Missing, eh? And what do the police say? The police? They don't believe me. They say he's just abandoned me. But that's a lie. Ah, uh, well, his caring parents. Obviously. Your clothes are well mended and you can read. Your parents may be poor, but you are loved. Yeah, well, there's just the two of us now. My mother died when I was a little one. That's just one more reason for not leaving you. Your father doesn't seem the irresponsible type. He's very good to you. Well, that's right. But he has no fixed work, so he often takes odd jobs for the day. Because that's all he can find. Only this time, he didn't come home. And when was the last time you saw him? Three weeks ago. He left for a new job. But this time... He was acting a bit strange and angry. Strange? In what way? He said to me, Son, I'm out on a special job. Don't you dare move from here. I think something went wrong. Three weeks? That's a long time. Well, every day I thought he would show up. And anyway, I, I can look after myself. Uh, malnutrition? No, he's just too young. What were you thinking? You and your father are both at risk. You should have come to me much earlier. I was afraid. No, I ain't got no family, and I've got no other place to go. If our landlord finds out that father left me, he'll throw me out on the street. Tom, you've been very resourceful. We shall be discreet. If only my mother was still here. Very well. Your address, please, Tom. 12 Dorset Street. The first floor, door E. It's in Whitechapel, sir. But I ain't got no money to pay. Who asked for money, Tom? Your case seems to be the very medicine I need. I'll meet you there shortly. Oh, thank you, sir. Alright, first of all, we're playing first person because that's just what we do. Um, let's let's get dressed a little better, because I hate this slob. Casual suit? Yeah, casual suit. Definitely want a top hat. That's him with no facial hair? Cool. You're a stalker? No. Also go to top hat. Alright. Uh, let's go investigate the disappearance. It's a longer load time than I'm used to.
Maybe I should disable the loading the in cab. Are too narrow for the cab. I'll have to walk. North Street. So we're looking for 12 Dorset Street. Thirteen is still on the opposite side. Fifteen is still here. Fourteen. Where the fuck is twelve? I okay. And it's E. I guess it's on the first floor. Yes. This is home, Mr. Holmes. Uh, okay, I don't see anything yet, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Hurst covered his bills ahead of time, thus providing Tom with security and sustenance. According to these bills, just hurts is paid the rent in advance. My mother, sir. She died when I was very young. My father told me what she was like, but that's all I have. Poor Tom. I don't see anything. On the outside, maybe? George Hurst's work was varied. He was evidently a hard-working and valuable hand. Old clothes, soiled and worn. The roof leaks all the time. Father used to fix it. Huh. So that's why you came to see me. Yeah. Tom probably reads at night. A collection of worn-out and second-hand books. George Hurst was providing his son with the best education that he could afford. Father bought all those books for me. He didn't tell me, but I know that he pawned his coat for them. Food's running low. It's already three weeks since George Hurst's disappearance. Uh, are we not going to look at uh, the broken plate? Preparations for peasant soup. A clever concoction for somebody with apparently no culinary skills. I think we're pretty much toward the apartment at this point. Am I? Oh! Well, okay. I had not realized that there was actually a ladder. It's too dark. I can't see anything. Excuse me. Kind of need to grab this and that. A leather satchel, what's in it? Hello there, George. I know it's difficult for you to find a job and need to feed and clothe your son. So attached to this letter, a pub leaflet. I've heard that there is a fellow there who's offering a special job. Maybe we'll help you. I hope so. Good luck. Just some old things. Why am I still... Oh. Wow, that was very discreet. The old Tabard pub, North Street. Okay. Nothing on the back? Glue. Probably taken from a wall. 
The old Tabard pub? Did you hear anything about it from your father, John? My father's a regular, but he's not a drinker, sir. It's close by on North Street. All right. Um, yeah, this was it. I um... I don't know whether I love or not, but they tell you when you've completed something. Have I seen you found yourself a job? If you can call it that, I hate it. But if, if you've got any proper work for me, I just might be in need of your assistance later. Wait here. All right. Here is the poop. I need to earwig to find out who is offering this special job. I have no idea what that meant. Oh, I guess I need, just need to sit in over here, people. No, no, no. That fellow who's offering the special jobs, he never drinks alcohol. Very discreet. Equality for the working class. I'm glad I'm my own boss. I can complain only to myself. Or to Watson. How about these people? The man who's offering that special job has a proper set of mutton chop whiskers. So, the man I'm looking for has whiskers and never drinks alcohol. Dump the bosses off your backs. We have whiskers. Oh, and we have beer. It's not here. Can I open the store? No. Water. This must be the man that I'm looking for. I admit that drinking water in a pub is a bit weird. Can I? Oh, keep watch, I guess. This is funny and weird, okay. 30 minutes later. Why do we need to manage skip time? I don't know. At the start of October, Mr. John Stillbridge went missing from Dorset Street under mysterious circumstances. If you have any information, please contact Mrs. Stillbridge at 5 Dorset Street. Thank you in advance for any information or help. That was the leaflet. Dump the bosses off your backs. Uh, Alright, so I guess we're gonna go... Back on Dorset. Be 
you see that gentleman, I need you to follow him and report back to me. All right, Mr. Holmes. Oh, I am Lincoln's now, apparently. I was not expecting to switch. What? Oh, no. Why are we doing tailing missions? Ah, oh, this is the worst. My chapel never changes. Dirt and beggars everywhere. This is the worst. When will developers learn that tailing missions are never fun? They won't let me pass. I'll need to find another way. All right, let's go around. Meat to their dogs. The living costs are too much these days. My son has to work down the sewers. He's only and get in there <laughs> stupid kid I'll be able to continue the chase if I climb up the chimney but it's dangerous stop crying and get to work please you don't have to beat him I'll do it I'll clean the chimney go on then Oh, good lord. <coughs> there, there is an insane amount of child issues and trauma so early in the game. What the fuck is this game? He's still here, that's a relief. much can we just go through oh god Th these two stick mini games are the worst Fucking hard to manage both at the same time when they're in separate circles.
No, don't don't go that way. way because otherwise he's gonna spot you, right? I still think this is taking way too long. This is not Wigan Stale Simulator. This is Sherlock Holmes the Devil's Daughter. I wanna play as Sherlock, damn it. I guess I should just go talk to this woman. He should shine Jim from Trader Street. He's new because he's drunk stepfather beats him. Good lord, what is up with child abuse in this game so early? Can you let me a kick? I'm on a secret mission for Mr. Holmes. Mm -hmm. He's mute because his stepfather beats him? What the fuck? And now we're shining shoes? This could be useful with a small... The regular brush. What are you doing? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I'm, I'm still learning. I just got three red marks just for that. There was no clue whatsoever as to what to do, too, you know? I've never shined a shoe in my life. I don't know what order you're supposed to do things in. He's talking with a cabin. I need to get closer. Damn. I need to find another one. At last, the weather's good. Last week was freezing. Oh, you said it doesn't get cold again. I've no money for coal. Lots of dubious choices made in this game at the moment. I can't lose him now.
interesting. What's going on in the yard? Um, here. Why can I not go first person? Wow, a lot of expensive stuff. Oh, a coat of arms. It might help Mr. Holmes. I'll make a drawing of it. It's too dangerous to enter. I can't see what's inside. So just keep going around? Can't see what's inside. It's too dangerous to enter. Locked. Have I done all that I could? Oh, that window doesn't seem. Do only two people live here? I wish one was me. Bags of food. I like this ass. Time to report to Mr. Holmes. Let's get outside before I get caught. Such baffling choices. Wigan's tale was quite unusual. What do you make of what he found, Holmes? Wiggins did a good job. Right, let's... Coat of arms. Marks and symbols. That's not the one I need. Uh, English coat of arms. Coat of arms of the Marsh family. Nowadays, the representative of this family is Lord Edward Marsh, the well-known benefactor. He provides the poor people of Whitechapel with provisions, warm clothes, etc. Lord Marsh is also renowned as the co-founder of the Special Education Program, which allows poor people the opportunity of education. Lord Marsh resides at 3 Main Free Road, London. Here it is. So this man could be Lord Marsh. Huh. A lord who hangs around in a public house. Let's pay a visit to Lord Marsh. We'll pretend that we're interested in his charitable activities. Oh, I want to pet Toby. Mr. Holmes, you have a visitor. Oh, just ask him to wait. I'm afraid that won't be possible. This young lady refuses to wait for anything. What? Father! Caitlin! <laughs> Miss Caitlin's boarding school was flooded. Everyone was sent home. As if it could smell any mustier. <laughs> My word, how is it possible that you have grown up so fast? You'll be staying. Wherever will we put you? Holmes, I'll give her my room, of course. What do you have to say, Kate? You're on a new case. A respectable lady who's being blackmailed? Or is it a love story between a prince and a suffragist? However did you guess? You will tell me, won't you, Father? Mm. We'll see if you behave. All right, then. Have fun. I'll go and unpack. Will you help me, Mrs. Hudson? So, as a reminder, um, that is um. Moriarty's daughter, who Sherlock adopted once he essentially killed Moriarty in the Testament of Sherlock Holmes. And, you know, she kind of just sat out the last case, but now she is here. And I literally have no deduction items yet. 
just weird. I guess we don't have much of a case for now. We just followed this guy. Holmes, about Caitlin. Yes? She has grown up, hasn't she? Don't you think it's time to... to tell her? To tell her what, Watson? Well, about her father. Never. Absolutely never. Do you hear me? Holmes, time to you report to Mr. Holmes. For Let's the get outside before I get caught. You owe her the truth. She is old enough now. I would lose her. Can't you see that? She must never know, Watson. Is that clear? Holmes. It won't and can't happen. Knock, knock. Come in, please. Good day, gentlemen. Welcome to my home. How may I help you? Good day to you, Lord Marsh. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is my friend and colleague. Time Dr. to report Watson. to Mr. Holmes. Let's get outside before I get caught. Well, that bug is a little annoying, but hopefully it will be done soon. Red eyes. Heals and well. Or lack of sleep, maybe. I don't know. Gold ring. He's a man of wealth. Blanket. He is ill. Kills. Strong painkiller. Lord Marsh, personal assistant. Time to report to Mr. Holmes. Let's get outside before I get caught. Oh, fuck me. Is that going to repeat? Member of a hunting club, stethoscope, physician. Oh, that's it. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's ill because of the physician and painkillers, so. Ruben Fisher is a young man of 25 and already competent physician. He's well educated and mannered and a member of a hunting club. His clothes indicate that he's financially wealthy. Ruben Fisher is not only a physician, he's also Lord Marsh's personal assistant. Lord Marsh. Lord Marsh is a wealthy man who holds a high position in society, indicated by his expensive clothes and valuable gold ring. He has dedicated his life to helping the poor. He is ill, therefore he is covered with a blanket, despite the fact that it's quite warm inside the room. I hope we're not disturbing you. You are with your physician? Yes, this is Dr. Reuben Fisher. But no, please, I'm intrigued by your visit, Mr. Holmes. I'm glad to hear it. The last thing I'd wish is to upset the patient. Lord Marsh, can I just say that I admire all of your efforts in assisting the poor of London? Ah, uh, yes. It is a war that we must fight on our streets and now, too, from my home. You must surely have noticed those bags full of items, clothing and books for the unfortunate. That is inspiration. Time to report um, to at Mr. my Holmes. own humble Let's level, I too I try my best to support those <laughs> in need. I thought perhaps that I could be of some assistance. I don't see why not. I already have the valuable assistance of Dr. Fisher, who happens to be my personal physician. It's curious. Your face seems familiar to me, Doctor. Oddly, I'm associating it with Whitechapel? Well done. You are right. I do occasionally frequent a few hostelries over there, would you believe it? <laughs> Not that I am a drinker. But there, dressed as a working man, I can approach the Tom's other fellows to, to see if they might be interested in a special job. A special job? May I ask what you're referring to? Certainly. Since Lord Marsh began his special education program in 1889, he foresaw that such people would need an occupation of some kind. And so, with or without education, we propose these opportunities to work with Lord Marsh. It offers the less fortunate a chance to help make London a better place. That's remarkable. Yes, indeed. In order to truly see, one requires vision, yes? But also insight. And Lord Marsh has believed this since he was a child. Oh, oh Dr. Tom's Fisher makes it all Mr. sound so romantic. Oh, God. Let's close this. Oh, door. this bug is so annoying. Forgive me, Lord Marsh. You're looking very pale. Might I offer Dr. Watson's assistance? That is kind of you, but I feel confident that I can provide Lord Marsh with the care that he requires. How long have you been like this, my lord? I'm fine, Dr. Watson. Don't fuss. It's only influenza. I'll be better in a few days. I can feel it already. 
I don't know. There's powerful painkillers. In that case, why are you taking such powerful painkillers? Excuse me, to Mr. Holmes. What do you mean? Oh, God. God. Mr. Holmes is referring to the pills on your table. I'm sorry, but that's a medical confidentiality. Lord Marshall's diagnosis with influenza, however, is illness appears to be something more serious. A provision dealing with the paupers of Whitechapel. Some papers, document with seal. Time to report to Mr. Holmes. Let's get outside before I get caught. Dear Lord Marsh, here is a list of special participants of selected participants for the special education program in October. It looks to be a very promising event, I'm looking forward to it. Um uh, I've never heard of this man. John Strobridge, I've seen this name before. It was on a missing persons poster. Last year, three orphans were put through medical college. Thanks Time to Lord to Marsh to Mr. and his special Let's education get outside program, before I get caught. great many poor people will have a second chance in life. Thanks to Lord Marsh and the special education program, a great many poor people will have a second chance in life. Lord Marsh, hunting with his friends. Ah, my dear comrades, Lord Collins and Lord Harrington. If it wasn't for this godforsaken English malady, I'd be with those rapscallions right now. All in due time, my lord. You know what time it is? Time to report to Mr. Holmes! Might work it out. Do you have any ideas to the number of people who might owe you their lives? Time to report to Mr. Holmes. Oh, there we go. Mr. Holmes. But indeed, these people have become like a family to me. That would be a fairly large family, I imagine. If the bug persists <laughs> through our changing location, I will save and reload. As for how large, well, Fisher is the one who keeps record. Might we take a glance at the list? I regret that is impossible. It is confidential. I stand firm upon that point, Mr. Holmes. I quite understand. We'll most certainly send a donation towards your educational program. I shall take my leave then. I thank you both and I wish you all the very best, gentlemen. I'm gonna report to Mr. Holmes before they spot me. To report to Mr. Holmes. Let's get outside before I get caught. <sighs> the special job is probably connected to the education program. It's more of a hunch for now, but I think that's probably the case. Let me just go to Baker Street to move. Mm, looks like that's everything I can do for now. Oh, no, I need to talk to him about his... Okay. Let's go back to his house. Lord Marsh without a reason. No? Oh, to his son Tom. Okay, let's go back to first house. about my father Tom Tom not so fast I wanted to ask you if you remember your father mentioning anything about a special education program an education program no he only talked about a special job what's this box Tom oh yeah I just found it Mr. Holmes it was ever so well hidden I've no idea why well done my boy it could prove very helpful This, this oil can also be used on weapons. 
A ramrod to clean a rifle. Wolfjack. Looks like a military badge. Tom, does your father own a rifle? A rifle? No. If he had, he would have shot at me. I'm sure that he wouldn't have shown at you. I need to find this rifle. Well, there's key. What can I open with this key? This scrap of cloth was used to oil a firearm. Tom, does your father have any other property? No. Well, at least I don't think so. I have to take Toby. He'll take a sniff of the oil. We'll find that rifle. Yay, Toby! Back to Baker Street. First, examine the coat of arms. Uh, military badge. Oh, here. Ba -ba -ba. A wolf jack is half wolf and half jack rabbit. It was used by the Lilith Scouts as a subdescriptive nickname. The Lilith Scouts became formerly the, for the British Army's first marksman unit. Here it is. Hmm. All right, Toby. Whoa, who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Come on, Toby. It's time for you to earn your keep. Who's a good boy? Yeah, you are a good boy. You're a good boy. Watson, I prefer to visit Lord March. I'm worried about the condition of his health. First. <laughs> Oh, look at that cute little floofy boy. The human species does not deserve dogs. We just simply do not. Cool music. Wonky. Time this happened with a Toby Trace. Um. It's only a garden shed. Let's go on. All right. Follow the other side, then I guess. out or goes back in on itself so no then we keep going we go this way Whoa, what are 
these tunnels. What the fuck? People use this cellar for storage. This uh nothing that could interest me. This was not what I was expecting by different orders of magnitude. Pile of rubbish. I guess maybe this is just like a common cellar or something. Ordinary Just rubbish. Tom's photograph. Let's try to get inside. Oh, uh, use the correct lockpicks. Okay. There's no space for this lockpick. There's no space. There's no. Oh, I see. Took me a second. For this lockpick. Took me a second to understand what they wanted me to do. News clippings on lords in the education program. Why are they here? Lord Marsh, in association with his friends Lord Harrington and Lord Collins, is the co founder of the special education program. In assisting the poor to build better lives and more certain futures, these three gentlemen surely help lift the level of our struggling society. Dear Tom, if you're reading this letter, then it means that I'm dead. I'm so sorry that things have to end up this way, but I had no other choice. You have to know that. You're a very smart boy, and I'm so proud of you. I hope one day you'll understand and you'll forgive me. Son, I love you so much. Don't despair. Try to be happy. For you'll grow up to be a man someday, and sooner than you think. You won't be alone. Me and your man will be looking over you from heaven. You're a living father. Let's compare this list with the evidence that we found earlier. This is the list of selected participants for October's special education program. According to this poster, John Strobridge is missing. Let's compare them with people from her stockings. Tanner Kelly, Thatcher Staple. Tanner Kelly. Oh, I need to copy one and... No. This man appears in both documents. And Staple. And John Sturbridge. Hmm. All the people in Marsh's document are marked and dated in George Hurst's files. And they're all in Group S, you might have noticed. A map of Epping Forest. Dear George, I do understand you and it's so sad. Same as you, I can't find a job, not even the smallest thing. My children have nothing to eat. When I try to find anything, the bosses just say that they don't want wounded people working for them. Our military service means nothing. Our country used this in war, but now it has abandoned us. Nobody cares. Your friend, Jack. Order. By Her Royal Majesty Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, I, Frederick Russell Burnham, Mayor of the British Army, declare the contract stands its gratitude to George Hurst, an honorable soldier of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, for his valiant military service. The British Army hereby awards him the Distinguished Conduct Medal and retires him due to the injuries sustained while in duty. Major Frederick Russell Burnham. And 
see what he was. Oh. There was a rifle here. George Hurst took it with him. All right. Um. George Hurst knew that he stood no chance of returning from a special job. George Hurst wrote a farewell letter, but he didn't even stop. This is a chance that he's still alive. I'm actually trending towards the second, but... George Hurst had belonged to the Lovitz Gats Marksman Unit. All participants in the S group came from the special education program could be missing. George Hurst's special job is undoubtedly associated with violence if he took his rifle with him. We want to sneak into Lord Marshall's office and uncover additional information about the special education program. No, George Hurst was collecting information about the paupers and the Lord's involved in the special education program. I will believe that. This means he knew some people had been missing from the special education program. I don't want to commit to him being dead or not just yet. For now, we'll go and sneak into Lord Marsh's house. What are you doing here? What are you planning? A mission of my own. You must play the role of the conscientious doctor while I sneak inside Marsh's house. That's the only way of helping little Tom. Time to report to Mr. Holmes. Let's get Oh out no! 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 I assume it just saved. So let, let's try to go back to the main menu and back because I swear to God, if I hear time to report to Mr. Holmes one more time. And you know, if we do, well, let's just start destiny and we'll deal with it. But hopefully reloading will clear that up. All right, we need to sneak into his house. This is not the best way to sneak in. I don't even know what triggered that weird line repeat bug. Uh, the window is firmly shut. How about this way? All right, so report to Mr. Holmes. Let's get outside before. Ah, fuck me. There's no space for this lockpick. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. How can I help you? I came to visit Lord Marsh. What for? I would very much like to see Lord Marsh, if you please. I uh, oh. Oh, you're so clumsy. Can you please not? I have to visit Lord Marsh. Time to report to my Mr. Holmes. Services. Let's get Fisher, outside. Fisher, please I get allow Doctor Watson to enter. Good job, Watson. Painting, hang it crookedly, fingerprints. Oh, there's a safe behind this thing. Of course. Let's see how hard to crack this safe is. 
Doctor, it appears that you were impatient to pay me another visit. Indeed. Will you allow me to examine you? A second opinion, so that the great Lord Marge does not become the late Lord Marge. <laughs> well, since you put it that way, very well. Time to report to Shall Mr. I Holmes. Retire to Let's your get office, outside Lord before Marge. I get caught. No, oh, please. Oh, oh. I insist that you stay. I shall need your assistance. Will you break anything else? I'll try my best. I... What? Mr. Holmes? What are you doing here? Oh, was I supposed to hide? Will you break anything else? I'll try my best. Time to report to Mr. Holmes. Let's get outside before I get caught. Uh, oh, here. Marsh is a keen hunter. Time to report to Mr. Holmes. Let's get outside before I get caught. I mean, I have a feeling I know what's happening here. to report to Mr. Holmes. Let's get outside before I get caught. This is pretty, pretty ridiculous that we ran into that random bug. Oh. Not that hard to crack, turns out. November 7th. This means that the meeting is planned for today. Dear Lord Marsh, on November 7th, our meeting starts at Grunstone's Oak. I've attached the map to the letter so you may find the place easily, Lord Collins. Time to report to Mr. Holmes. Let's get outside before I get caught. We both know what's happening here, right? I so admire all of these poppers. They seem to me such a breath of fresh air. Communicating with them is such a pleasure. And they are so smart, not like us. Perhaps it is they who should have been lords and we the simple commoners. Lord Harrington. Alright, um... Dear Lord Marsh, thanks to the special education program, my life has been changed completely. I didn't know how to thank you, so I picked you as flower. Thank you. Time to report to Mr. Holmes. Let's get outside before I get caught. To this day, and by my estimation, the special education program has saved over 200 individuals from the gutter and elevated them to help form and support the critical foundation of a prosperous empire. This is largely thanks to the wisdom and foresight of Lord Marsh, who is a most progressive and wise politician. He has carried out a great deal of work in this field whilst ignoring the critics and any hindrance from his arrogant colleagues for so set in their ways. Dear Lord Collins, it is clear to me that we could learn a great many things about running the Empire from those whom we trample underfoot. These same people whom we leave destitute and starving in the shadows of our own city at home or abroad. Lord Marsh. I can hide here. Um, okay. So we've completed all of this, so let's actually go back to... Do I have to check it in the archive? Apparently, okay. So let's just go. I have to finish my search of the office. Oh, we're not done? I thought we were done. Hmm. I'd suggest that your current weakness is perhaps more than a simple case of Time to report to Mr. Holmes. Let's get outside before I get caught. <laughs> Where might your companion be, Dr. Watson? 
Oh, he's busy poking his nose into other people's business, I'm sure. <clears throat> Oh shit, oh shit. My lord, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I must remind you about your meeting. Is it already time? My apologies, Dr. Watson, but we are expected elsewhere. Might we offer you a lift? You are going out. I'm not sure that's wise in your condition. I value your Tom's opinion, Mr. Holmes. but Let's misery never rests and I am needed. Well, do please take good care of yourself, Lord Marsh. I'll send you my diagnosis next week. Thank you, Dr. Watson. Farewell. All right, let's look at our deduction board a little bit while we're dealing with this. Lord Marsh has friends who are skillful and experienced hunters. That's about it, I guess. I think based on the intro too, it's pretty clear that those people are hunting the most dangerous game. Men. Holmes, come here. This is serious. Watson, what are you doing at my table? I just need to check one thing about Lord Marsh. My intuition tells me that Lord Marsh is hiding something about his disease. His cough, in addition to his fever and his usage of strong painkillers, leads me to believe that he is seriously ill. Okay. Let's study it more closely. Mm. Sputum with tiny drops of blood. Mm. I could take a sample and examine it under the microscope. I need to take a sample. Oh, using the glass rod. Uh, glass rod? Oh, this thing. Let us apply chemicals to color the sample. I need a pipette. Oh. All right. This chemical should be applied third. This chemical. Oh, okay. It, it feels like a bit of a waste of time for me to just have to do the same thing three times. But okay. Now, let's examine the colored sample under the microscope. Uh... Oh. Mycobacterium. It appears that Lord Marsh is seriously ill. Okay. Sure. Holmes, this is no longer a laughing matter. It is just as I feared Lord Marsh is suffering from tuberculosis. You don't say. Yes, I do say. And Holmes, he will die if he is not transferred to a sanatorium as soon as possible. And yet both Lord Marsh and Dr. Fisher are doing their best to hide this fact. How interesting. But why? Why indeed, Watson. Oh, but... Oh, dear God. You don't think that Lord Marsh contracted tuberculosis while aiding the poor? How terrible. I have a commitment that I can't possibly cancel. Holmes, during my absence, please be extremely careful. This disease is highly contagious. And remember that we have women at home. Thank you, Miss Alice. Until later. I'll see you soon, Caitlin. Where have you been? Our neighbor lent me a book. She is so kind. I think she likes you. <laughs> I doubt that. How is your investigation going? It's going. Dracula? Yes. It's forbidden reading at my boarding school. Ooh. Did you know? Well, well. Is it the sex in it? Am I supposed to do something with Kaplan? Oh, I can't wait to tell all my friends about this. Uh, all right, archives. Um, Where? 
No. Atomic science. Probably not. Technology, history, medicine, botany. Oh! Grenson's Oak. Grenson's Oak is a strange and mysterious tree that grows in Epping Forest. The origin of the name is unconfirmed, although there are many legends and fables connected to it. Some people say that over centuries, witches performed their ceremonies near the tree, and these rites have assured that whoever may touch the trunk of Grenson's Oak will be cured for all time. Oh, I see. I see. Constance Oak is in Epping Forest. That's the place indicated on George Hurst's map. All right. Should we just go there? Oh, I guess I need to. No. What icon was that? Search the map. Uh, go back to Marsh's house, I guess, huh? How do I get back to that spot? Is it okay? Through the garden, and it was here on the right. of Epping Forest. I, I, what? I am confused as to what you want me to do. I'm looking to see if I see Brunston Oak. to search the map. What? Brunson Oak, there it is. I guess this is not the map that you want me to search. Is there a map at 221B that you want me to search? Try to find the place from the hand-drawn map. It, it made more sense for me to find it from that place, but hey, here it is. Here it is. Drat. I need to hurry if I want to find out what's going on at the forest. Father, that boy Wiggins, does he come here very often? He helps occasionally in some of my cases. Why do you ask? I'd like to talk to him. Talk to him? Father... Back at school, there are only girls to talk to, and they are so boring. I'm sure Wiggins has lots of exciting stories to tell about his life in London. It would be so romantic. <laughs> I like lost. Romantic, whatever that might be. Sometimes I wonder what world you live in, Father. Oh, Kate. I'll leave you alone now.
George Harris to no, this is what I already looked at. It's, it's this one. George Harris knew about the meeting between Lord Marshall's companion that took place in Epping Forest. So we should go to Epping Forest. What? This is another insane mini game. Go down this path. Run, rabbit, run. I have almost lost him. They are indeed haunting humans. Oh, come on. I was behind a boulder. That is, without a shadow of a doubt, bullshit. Shady path, rare bushes, blocked by tree, descent. Let's go down to descent. This man was killed recently. The body is still warm. Find him, boys! Find him! Oh, great. More of this, huh? Ah, fuck! Wrong way. Oh, come on! Mm. Is this fun? No, not particularly. Smell of swamp, matted woods, rock slide. Oh uh, no, big stone, big stone.
Okay, so straight to the next cover. Straight to those bushes and then to the tree. Uh, straight to that cover. Straight to the next cover. Don't worry, no one's going to find your body. Uh, very. Oh, come on! I was on the path! That bullshit! Bullshit! Oh, good lord. The crazy rich person is gaining ground. That's fine, I made it out. me through a swamp. Oh great, one of these mini games. No. Oh hey, this is one of the nobles. My god, it's Lord Harrington's body. He was killed by a shot to the forehead. My health is deteriorating. I need to dress my wound. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, there's a house in here. Quartermain Club. This must be Lord Marsh's cabin. This will help to dress my wound. Someone's coming, I better hide. Oh, uh, yes, in here. Almost over. Who are you? George Erst from the First Lovett Scouts, here to deliver justice. <laughs> An old soldier. How ironic. Did we refuse you on our special education program? It's true, I was refused. An old wounded soldier is useless to you. Oh, God. But he can still be dangerous. We hunted a lot in these woods, but I didn't expect to become the prey. I have lived a grand life without any limits set by others. I will die a happy man, so you won't see me begging you festering wretch. Prepare to meet your maker. No, don't kill him! So we know for sure that he's still alive.
Somebody hunted the paupers and the lords involved in the special education program. I'm pretty sure it's Lord Marsh. He wants revenge. Marsh hunts down people. He fucking hunts down people. He's hunting people. There is no way we're gonna absolve him. Fucking die, you fucking Greek creep. George, lower your rifle, please, for Tom's sake. Holmes! My, my. An almost worthy opponent. Tom? My Tom? If you've endangered my lad in any way, you will pay dearly. I assure you that Tom is safe in London with a well-trusted friend. And now, it's time to end this. By all means. George, listen to me. If you're seeking an apt punishment and vengeance, killing Marsh will give him exactly what he wants. He would die knowing that he had fulfilled his life through his absolute control. But if you allow Marsh to live and be arrested, he will suffer a punishment far greater than you or I could deliver. His ball and chain will be the debilitating tuberculosis. It will drag him painfully and slowly to his demise behind bars. You're mad. You're both mad. Let's go and find Tom. Not just yet. See, Lord Marsh, you will die here. Although not by the gun. You'll die slowly. Don't do this, George. Detective, take a look here. This is how you became sick. Lord Marsh, the beheading of your victims who were suffering from tuberculosis was what infected you. Poetic justice. Holmes, you cannot fully understand why we helped so many and sacrificed a few. But don't let me die like this. Just kill me now. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, now nah, it's fine. Mr. Hurst. You have already served brutal justice to Lord Harrington, and I hope Lord Collins and Dr. Fisher. Taking that into consideration, you may as well kill Lord Marsh and end the Quartermain Club completely. No loose ends. I would have personally rather... Um... Shot the knife out of his hands? But... Eh. Lord Marsh is a cold blood killer who doesn't value the lives of the poor people. He believes that he has the right to choose who will live and who will die. It deserves his fate. Yay! Fair conclusion. Um, yeah, and this is where we're gonna call it. An hour and a half. Great, great. This is why I love this cruise game and this game, is that they're nice bite-sized episodes. This first case was maybe not the best. Um, just very obvious. I think I think they kind of spoiled the game by showing you Sherlock being hunted in the forest. That was kind of like a tip off to what was gonna happen. So that was a bit of a mistake in my opinion. But still, you know, it was it was a pleasant case. So thank you for watching. Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash games with Nick and youtube.com slash games with Nick. If you're catching this up on Twitch, make sure to um, well hit the follow button and the bell on Twitch itself so you know when I go live for some bonus streams. But also make sure you check out my YouTube channel. Um, I'll be taking a break from streaming for uh, between mid-December and mid-January because I'll be going on a vacation. Uh, but there will be content regularly posted on the YouTube channel, uh, including some bonus content that I did not stream on Twitch. So check that out, like, subscribe, leave a comment for the things that you enjoy watching and the things you like me to stream more of. If you're watching this on Twitch, uh, sorry, on YouTube, uh, thank you for that. I hope you've kept up with the cool bonus streams that I've been posting there. Uh, make sure to follow me on Twitch.tv so you can make as well. I'm also use Twitch as my archive for the streams that I do, so feel free to follow me on Twitch as well. Hit the bell. Know when I go live, uh, as well as like, subscribe, and comment on youtube.com slash games with Nick. 
to tell me what you'd like to see more of. So uh, thank you for watching. And until next time.